but you can get a pretty good arc with just 90 volts. <laughs> okay, here's our solar panel project I've been working on. <clears throat> These panels I'm using are 24 volts at 250 watts. Gonna have 22 of them up here, so that will give us five and a half kilowatts. Um, these are the aisles I made for it. Each one of these holds seven. And then this big long one up here goes up a little further. We'll hold nine. Um, I'll show you why these here only hold seven. Because we have this peak, so hopefully these ones will get shaded partially for the day. As you see, it's an average Ohio day. <laughs> um, I got, I think five grid ties coming right now for it. There are 1300 watts. This is gonna be, I, later on, I do wanna add a couple more grid ties to it just because, um, you know, the, it, I found in the past, if you push them to the max, they kind of die on you. Or, well, they're just the cheap China ones and the fans end up blowing up and cooking themselves. Oh, I gotta bring all these up here. Let's see, I need to bring up nine more. Okay, so earlier today I decided to go out and finish recording this, but for some reason in the settings in my camera, I had it set to not record audio, which I gradually started this video out recording with my uh, iPhone, and today I decided to pull out my Canon camera and go up there and start recording, but obviously I didn't have it set up to record audio, so all the video I shot today has no audio. So I don't exactly remember what I was saying at each part, but I'm just kind of trying to watch the video and dub it in. Bear with me with this, so let's give it a shot. Okay, here's the metal panel I decided to stick everything in just in case anything decided to blow up. Hopefully it all retains it. And I ended up going with the grow watt grid tie, it's a 6,000 watt unit. Here's what the day is like, pretty clear, nice and bright and sunny. Now I'm just kind of flipping through the screens. I can't really see those, and I'm sure you can't either. But it was almost 6,000 watts. It was about 580, somewhere around there we were pushing at this time. I was going through the different screens, showing you that showed like each, because uh, I had two rays, two uh, rays of solar panels. There's 14 on each one in series. So it shows you individually which array is doing what. They're about 28, 2900 a piece. And then uh, down below, I have some like uh, DC disconnect breakers. Make sure when you put your disconnect breakers, if you're trying to switch DC, it is very important that you are using DC breakers and not AC because DC is like at least 10 times more likely the arc especially with this system because with this system under load is about 450 volts roughly open load this thing's almost 600 volts that is very 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 easy to arc i have a 30 amp ac breaker and these i think were two well actually i made them double pull i 3d printed that little piece there and made them four pull but those are two I mean double pulls, two double pulls that are 10 amps, if you get what I'm trying to say. That made no sense. 
and I don't know where I'm going off in the camera here I'm probably gonna cut this out because I'm gonna start waving this thing all over the place so I'm gonna cut it right here because I have no idea what I'm talking about oh I did put five panels up on the old side of the barn I do know that part and I'm going on about the dust and I'm about ready to start waving that camera so I'm gonna cut the video here so far with this grid tie, I only have two complaints. And the first one is this stupid USB the Wi-Fi dongle. Like, the Wi-Fi exception on this thing is horrible. I have my access point located in this barn in the top of the peak, about center of the barn. So it's about 25, 30 feet from where the actual dongle's located. And I could not get this crazy thing to connect to the Wi-Fi no matter what. It would always, when you log into it, it would show it's fair or weak. So what I had to do is move my access point to the other side of the wall on that older barn there. So the access point is probably about 12 foot from line of sight to the dongle. When I did that, it finally connected. So if you want to do the online monitoring with this thing, you gotta have that, that access point like kissing your dongle to connect I don't know if you can use like um, a USB to Ethernet adapter so you can then you could just run an Ethernet cord to it I don't know if you have to use that dongle I would like to try that later on because I'll just run an Ethernet and be done with it I won't have to have any connection prompts because the next day when I got up the stupid thing did not connect to the Wi-Fi again and I mean the, the stupid access points right there and it's not a cheap access point it is not a piece of junk the second complaint I got, I'm going to do that later on in a video. I want to do a review on the grid tie and go over like the different screens and stuff. I'd like to get more a dedicated video to that, so keep tuned to that. I'll post that in the comments when I get there. And I have no idea where I'm going with the cameras right now. Right now I'm just looking at the aisles and things. Another thing is these soy beans in the background here when they harvest those, that's going to be like... I'm going to have to get up there and wash these things for sure because all the dust from the harvesting of those is going to be crazy. Just wanted to show you the Grow Watt interface. It's kind of cool. For some reason today this is not loading. Normally it tells you like your temperature, your, your cloud volume, all that stuff. But I don't understand why this ain't working. So I'm going to go to the day selection. As you can see we got the 21st to the 29th. And our output for the first day we had the grid tie. Um, I don't remember, but I don't think I think I had this fully set up that day. Maybe it did. Well, these first three days were really bad. I think I did have this in the set up in the morning. Yeah, I did because I set this up actually the night before, so it I was at work, so I wasn't able to actually see what it was doing these days. But we did 12.6, 12.7. Now do remember, I, I, it might have been hindering it because I had 14 pair in uh, series, and then I had the 9 in series. So the PV arrays weren't balanced. But I thought when I read the specs it was supposed to have some kind of balancer. I'm not sure, but I thought these two days here were pretty decent. And then we did 35.7 that's when we had uh, 14 and 14 and, and then we did 20.9 29.4 see 33.3 oh the stupid water pump had to kick on when I'm recording but hopefully you can still hear me and that dumb pump ain't too loud 207 kilowatts today we did 24.1 I have to go back through for the electric bill and see where we're actually paying. These might be a little bit on the higher side. Now, what I did, what I'm going to do to figure this out, instead of actually putting in there that we're paying four cents a kilowatt, because that's what it shows up as on our power bill, I'm going to take the total bill for the last couple of months and divide it with all their fees, service fees, all that garbage. Because they'll sit there and say you charging four cents a kilowatt your actual power bill is only like 40 50 bucks it's all the service fees and those service fees are based on as you see it just refreshed those service fees are based on how much you're using so 
they it's a lie you're not actually paying four cents a kilowatt time you put all the service fees on there and stuff you're actually paying more like 12 13 cents so I think you'd be better off if you set yours up to take the whole entire bill and divide it by whatever you're using 1200 watts kilowatts that will give you what you're actually paying and not what they're supposedly paying and it tells you I don't exactly understand how I did that's like 500 pounds Whoops. Like, yeah, almost 500 pounds. Like, how's that even possible? <laughs> of CO2. But, yeah, the Gizners are contribution. We are currently doing 5.2 kilowatts and it is 2 o'clock p.m. it's gonna start tapering off here soon so we might hit like 29 today time it's all done maybe 30 kilowatts I actually kinda like this interface cuz you can go back through select see what you did you can see what you did for an entire month or after a while you can see by year by year I am going to be adding another one of these here. I just gotta kinda recoup what I've invested in it. You get different pages. I can't remember. Yeah, I just named it Mopar Solar because that's what we named our Wi Fi. <laughs> My dad's really big on the cars and stuff. You get different settings and whoops. I have to cut that out because I don't want to give out my phone number and email and all that stuff over YouTube. <laughs> but um, yeah, kind of like the interface. Get your graphs. You can go in here. You can go back and select like the day before. Really bad day. It was like all cloudy. Then the clouds kind of went away. But time it went away, there wasn't really you know much time left this pretty rough and then it got kind of cloudy in the end of the day you can see this is just choppy as can be it's another really cloudy day I wish I knew why this wasn't loading just playing around with it well normally it tells you like your your weather right there but it ain't Now, wouldn't it be complete if I didn't show a video of the meter going backwards? Um, I'd like to thank you all that made it to the end. And please don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps. And have a good night.